So good afternoon, everyone. So I hope you'll have uh, enough uh, air to follow up. Um, so the, the talk of today is called uh, Security as a Service. So the idea is to tell you a bit more about what we did at Gemalto uh, regarding our, uh, uh, let's say, platformization or way in order to build uh, security and more authentication to uh, platform and API services. So, uh, it all started, if my click is working, yes. It all started with the cloud, you pretty sure you all know that. Um, we are providing security in the real world, so Biomalto is a French company, 30 years old, and we are providing essentially everything around identity and around data protection. So, it's working very well, but now we are facing what is called the digital transformation and most of our customers are closing the data center, closing their hardware facilities to move to the cloud and to bring to also uh, provide their services being consumed by their customer. So it seems like uh, it's simple, we just have also ourselves to move out to the cloud, but we do have a, a slight issue. In fact, when we do um, security, identity, authentication, data protection, we do it with this. Ah, no, sorry. With this, so this is how we provide identity. And then with this, this is how we provide data protection. So this is a token, physical one, giving you a random number to do your second factor authentication. And this is an HSM. So a uh, hardware security module doing cryptographic operation, key management, that you normally rack in a data center. But those, both those things, they don't work in the today's world because a lot of people are using uh, their own devices to access to all their company and a lot of people are not using data center anymore. So the question is, how can we provide those as a service? So I'm working as the, uh, in the, for the innovation of the Gemalto group, and we have a group of experts which is here to help the companies, the business lines, the R&D teams, in order to do this massive change of providing those quite powerful and successful tools into services. So what we first decided to do is to uh, define together a common referential. We had to speak the same language, because some of them were saying, okay, my solution is already SaaS, my solution is already, has already has some APIs, uh, I'm ready to face the new world. But in reality, sometimes it's not the case. Second is to really assess all our portfolio and making sure we understand the level of maturity we have, as well as the target and ambition we need, depending on the market, the need of our customers, and as so, um, what the competition is providing, especially the new entrants, which are by nature um, API driven. And then the, the last point is to be uh, able to have a off the shelf solution that can easily help R&Ds to bring their product being consumable as a service through APIs in self-service mode. So that's our, our journey and let me uh, dive a bit into that. So the first thing was to define uh, a common um, referential, a common level of maturity, a common, let's say, fields and dimension of what we believe are the core of a, a SaaS service or a consumable services through APIs for security. So the first one is related to scalability, I'm not sure. to, to elasticity. So our capacity to do, uh, to scale, uh, automatically so that customers are able to uh, have a high level of service whatever they, they do with uh, when connecting us. Second is about multi-tenancy. We want to gain some time on uh, com cost, avoiding having to replicate every instance. So for in the former world when we were adding a new HSM, we had somebody racking the HSM. So it was one customer, one HSM. So here the idea is to be able to share those infrastructures in the back end. Then there is the onboarding capability, depending on how the size of the customer, is it startup, is it SMB, is it large corporate, how can we make it as smooth as possible, making it um, available 
in self-service mode or through integrators, depending on the, the level of integration. Another dimension is regarding personalization. So meaning when there is a UI, it's mainly providing it as white label, but also in terms of workflow, it's the ability to, to customize the solution or to have it pre-integrated in major services. So if I give you an example, when we do key management over API, it's uh, important that we give the, per the capability to um, personalize the integration with other SaaS platforms. So for example, Salesforce with their protocol, um, Office 365, uh, G Suite and so on, they all have their own protocol to be integrated in key management. So we have to provide those level of uh, personalization. Then one is regarding analytics, the ability for customers to get reports on their usage. Uh, same thing, having it in self-service self mode in order to simplify their life and also make sure we concentrate on giving more value to, to the customer. Another dimension is licensing. You all know that being consumable through API gives the ability to change your business model. So here, same thing, being able to go to do a paper use, subscription, a reseller agreement in order to distribute, giving us as much flexibility as we used to have in the physical world with devices. Another one is the billing. This one is uh, probably the most complicated, is to make sure we are able to take the traffic, digest it, and being able to issue invoices as soon as possible, depending on the, the regularity the, the customer uh, requires. Uh, this is tough because we are also changing our own ERP and plugging things together are not as smooth as it should be. But that's something we believe is an important dimension in providing a, a service consumable through, through APIs whether it's for identification or uh, data protection. Most important, the dimension related to API, that's really making sure um, we have platform of our customer able to integrate to ours, and also the platform they are using integrated to ours. So we looked at all the, plats uh, the major SaaS platform customers were using in their cloud, and we made sure that our API would be compatible so that we would be pre-integrated, so that it would be a few click work on their side. The core of our activity, which is security, is to make sure that everything we do in this uh, software world is as strong and as uh, with the same level of certification that we do in the physical world. So that's something very important because in our business we do have a, a different type of uh, audits coming up on our solution in the financial world, in the health uh, care business, as well as uh, corporate protection. So we do have to provide uh, the same level of protection and make sure that what we will provide also help customer to reach their certification level. So that's uh, probably one of the, one of the dimensions we are, we are looking the more, more carefully. And for this one, we do, of course, um, leverage on all the expertise we had on the physical devices since the software is not embedded anymore, but running, uh, running in our cloud, in our solution. Sorry. And the last one, of course, is to make sure that the service is working. So it's related to business continuity and make sure we hold the SLAs. We do have two customers based in uh, West America requesting four nines. So we make sure that we're able to, to sustain that. And we are building a, a redundant infrastructure to make sure that uh, at every level of, uh, of the stack, we provide a redundancy in order to maintain those, uh, those levels of security. So having defined those 10 dimensions within uh, Gemalto, we went out to the different business line and we asked them, okay, how do you feel on your maturity level is regarding those, and we had defined different levels. And first of all, we, before going into, into the details, we noticed something interesting, is that depending on the population you were talking to, we had different results. So we interviewed developers, we interviewed uh, operational people, and we interviewed also business owners, and uh, strangely, the operational people were a bit more pessimistic. And uh, of course, the business people were a bit too much optimistic, so we really had to discuss and make sure that we had a good view on what was the reality and the maturity of our service, so that we don't overcommit and we have, a, let's say, a quite honest view on where we were. 
So if I take security, for example, here is the example, this is a different level of, of maturity we could see. So the level zero is that we don't do by any security by design, that's something we never did, but still we did qualify this level. Level one is that we provide basic confidentiality of integrity of the, the data of the customer. Level one is having the ability to do manual incident management. Level three, having it automated. Uh, level four would be to be able to auto-correct uh, an attack or at least uh, find a workaround. And level five is to be able to provide all the forensic analysis capabilities in case of breach, uh, meaning that normally you're not supposed to trigger it because everything is covered by the, the levels that are below. So that's an example on the, the, the dimension of uh, um, security, the difference of maturity we have. So in the end, we end up with a huge matrix that people have to fill with different type of um, uh, different level of maturity on different dimension. So after meeting um, all portfolio teams, so on business, on development, and an operation, we define what would be the minimum level to be called SaaS or API driven. So that's the line. So we decided that on elasticity, we would be able to provide um, auto scaling per customer by the customer on needs. On uh, multi tenancy, we would have a single instance but uh, separate data, aggregate data for different customers. On onboarding, the ability to be fully automated, not only but at least have API to auto provision uh, customer coming up. On customization, when there is a new UI, the ability to provide it as what level. In terms of analytics, is the ability to push the data out of a data warehouse to be later on interpreted by other teams. In terms of licensing, is to able to be able to. Um, affect different type of commercial license, at least paper use and subscription. Uh, on billing, it's the ability to provide all the raw data to uh, our ARP, then to be able to manage manually or not all the, um, the invoices. And then most important is to have APIs with an automated uh, documentation, as well as a few code example and training so that people could easily integrate our solution. So it may seem very simple, but when we started, most of our solution didn't have that. And then, in terms of security, is to have everything that, uh, in terms of alerting, to be to provide insight to our SOC, to our security operational center, in order to react. And in terms of business continuity, is to have everything effective in order to maintain a, a basic SLA. So currently, after two years. Most of our solutions are now above this line, so we are not doing any project mode anymore, we are not in racking any hardware anymore, so we are quite happy, but it's still some work, so if you look, um, so that's uh, a long way to go in order to fill uh, all the matrix uh, up, and I'm pretty sure most of you are probably on the top lines. So in order to achieve that, we did put in place um, some common tools, uh, common elements to help uh, team development teams and uh, business line to implement those uh, those platforms. And uh, we did put in place, uh, uh, let's say first, some API guidelines because we wanted the customers to have the same uh, developer experience, whatever products they would use within Gemalto. Then we did provide some recommended techno stack depending on the target they were deploying so that they would use, for example, as as native solution as possible coming from the cloud providers. We did also provide some design patterns to be uh, fully implemented through infrastructure as a code or at least with a high level design in order to be sure that their design would support requirements on security, business continuity, for example. Also, some uh, what we call enabler services. So those services are provided by central co central groups within the company in order to facilitate the life of the DevOps teams. So, for example, we have a certificate management uh, DNS, uh, the ability to provide to have libraries of all um, hardened image 
both at the VM as well as the OS level. And finally, we had a third party catalog where we list all the tools and libraries we have been using and open source we have been using with some feedbacks on the usability, the security, so that when a team is asking a question on their development, they are not reinventing the wheel and they can take it directly and also uh, find the right person within the company who has the knowledge on it. So Gemato for it's roughly 3,000 engineers, so we have a network and communities about the, around all those, uh, those, those third party. So moving that, in fact, we realized when building our tools that in fact there were two services we were always using and always um, calling for our own use, which are around identity and authentication and data protection, mainly for key management as well as encryption. So in fact, we did build up those two services very quickly, and I in the end, we ended up by having them so strong that we decided that we could open, up, open them up to the outside and make them as product. So what was the previous token, hardware token, is now becoming what we call safe net trusted access, which is the same capability but API-driven. And what was done as a physical machine, as a, an HSM, uh, is now consumable through APIs in what we call DPOD, data protection on demand. So those two services are where the, at the core of our offering and now being opened up to customers when they want to develop with high level of security, uh, identity capabilities, as well as data protection qualities, capabilities. But most important, it's opening up a lot of uh, new capabilities so it's really re reinventing our own portfolio. So for example, we are now looking at how to do identity verification at the service, and also the idea is to open it up for customer, to do biometry as a service, and same thing, being able to open it up for customer. Same thing, we, are, we used to have hardware, and now we're opening it as API and platform. And finally, banking as a service, which was very manual work based on a lot of operation and factories, and making it available as a service. In the end, it's all the Gemalto portfolio that we are making up as a service. Thank you very much. <laughs>